Nick John from Glovebox Live interviews folk singer Martha Tilston. to another interview for Glovebox Live. Just seen a fantastic set from Martha Tilston at the Red Lion Folk Club in Birmingham. After a long drive, Martha, it was up a from long Cornwall. Drive. <laughs> it was a long you, drive. You're looking a little weary, but it was a, it was a fantastic show. Oh, thank really you. Good. I really enjoyed it tonight, thanks. Did you, you strayed off set quite early on. Is that something yeah, you I do like tend to, do? to do that, but it went... I'd not... Uh, yeah. If I write a vague set for each, each half, because it's... It was like a gig of two halves. I normally, even if I don't keep it the same order, I tend to sort of have the deeper stuff in the second half. <laughs> but it just, I think, do you know what it was? I think the first song, I didn't feel totally in, in it, inside it. Do you know what I mean? Okay, you know when you feel like you're sort of tapping yeah. on a, yeah. knocking on a song, going, let me in. And, um, and so I just find sometimes going deeper um, helps me sort of attach, basically, to the meaning of it. Does that you, make sense? You, yeah, yeah you, but you, and you also you'll gauge how the audience are and what's coming back off them. I know folk yeah, audiences maybe. are notoriously quiet and respectful, but yeah, you must gauge a feeling. You seem to get that very early tonight from them. Oh, that's nice. But I think it's literally that, actually, weirdly, the the opposite happens in that I have to do a song where I almost, not don't care what the audience think, but I, where, it, where it, matters, it matters so much to me what I'm singing about that I forget about the audience, not forget okay, about them. Yeah. So tonight it felt like I needed to do a song early where I wasn't having that internal voice questioning, I was just in it. And then I felt a lot more relaxed. But the audience was so, they were, they were so nice tonight, really open actually. They're good here, aren't so they? So open. Oh, Birmingham's just so friendly, isn't it? Yeah, it's great. Yeah, that was lovely. Now you've done four studio albums of contemporary material, if I might mm. say that. Mm. Um, and then you've done The Sea, which is traditional songs. Mm. What, what led you at that point to, to do that album? I always thought I might do a traditional folk album and then I I think it's probably just that an awful lot of people are doing it really well um, lots of young folkies um, coming out of the folk course and, and sort of contemporaries of mine and it just sort of came to me that if I was going to do a traditional album I think I was talking to my stepdad he's a, he's a teacher a theatre director and teacher and he's um, Geordie and he sings uh, some Geordie songs and I was chatting to him on the phone about and I was thinking oh my gosh in interviews, people always ask me about my dad and my stepmom because yeah. they're professional songwriters. Mm. But actually, my whole I was brought up by an extended family and two mm. other parents too. And the album is a real family affair, isn't it? Exactly. And I was brought up by all these my uncles and aunties, all different people who aren't necessarily professional musicians, but they would all sing songs to me. So I suddenly thought, if I'm going to do this, it's going to be about the songs that are all around me, not just about the ones that people want to write about because they're well-known folk singers. Mm. It's going to be about what songs I really and like I really wanted to get my aunt but she won't sing anymore she lives in France now another auntie who's not a professional sing, songwriter she's a teacher but as as well and um, we, she used to sing a song to us when we were in Cornwall we didn't have a TV so we'd sing these songs to each other and anyway it just kind of felt like right I don't even know if I'm ever going to release this but the basis of it was me just getting in touch with all these family members and just saying let's do a song that either means something to us or one you know or send me an idea or whatever and and then halfway through, I had a crisis of confidence, thinking, "What am I doing? I'm not a traditional folk artist." <laughs> you know, I just do it by accident, really. Yeah. The first time I ever sang it was in a squat party in London. There was a yeah. squat party, and there was this trance music banging through the wall. Halfway through the gig, I just felt this urge to do something completely brave, the only way to sort of grab their attention. So I stepped off the stage into the crowd, sang "Silver Dagger," or I think it was "Silver Dagger," and people really responded to it. So. There's almost that element of performance as well when they're coming off the stage. I mean, that's another thing. And, and it, you, it was survival, you, actually, at that party, <laughs> I tell you. It was like, I've got to do something. They're either going to chuck me off or I have to do something to, like, surprise them because they were wanting trance yeah. music, you know. On the day that I was married to my marriage bed There came a bold sea captain He stood at my bed head 
Crying, arise, arise, young married man, and go along with me to the low, low lands of Holland to fight the enemy. Well, it's funny you mentioned Feist tonight, and mm. and when you mentioned that, mm. I thought, yeah, I would have put your music, you know, having listened to your previous albums. Sort of more in that bag than mm. in the traditional folk thing. And mm. I, I was talking to Steve Knightley of Show of Hands, and he said that some of their fans wouldn't treat them as a folk act. They wouldn't mm. think of them as a folk act. Mm. But he said, "But we've mapped the folk landscape," which I thought was a, a sort of excellent way of defining their place. And, I, and with you, the traditional thing fitted so well. It fits so well in with the rest of the material. I thought it was really good. It was yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say I'm mapping anything. I think I'm, I'm much more, um, I'm probably much more cabin boy following. <laughs> <laughs> Just kind of getting by on the ship. <laughs> where, where are we turning up today? Well, I end up. That looks nice. Okay, I'll probably survive on this one. We'll see. You know. Eliza and Martin Carthy have done an album together. Any plans of doing... Having duets what? with your dad or something. The weird thing, what uh, with we did a tour for a while, and yeah. we do a few duets. We have recorded a few duets, but um, the closest we got to talking about doing an album together was about three days before Lenny Cohen died. Bizarrely, Dad was he saw my Lenny Cohen song, but when he stayed at my house, and he said, "Oh, I love that song, the one um, strange song, the one I quoted from tonight," yeah. and. Um, and he opened up and he was just sort of sitting at my desk and, and going through it and I, I came on the stairs and I was singing with him and um, and I was like, oh, Dad, you should do it, it'd be great. You know, how would we ever get permission to sing his cover of songs? <laughs> and then I was and there was, I was saying, oh, Dad, if we ever do an album together, we should do a cover of Lenny Cohen's song. I would absolutely love that. And then we kind of laughed it off saying we'd love to, but let's face it, we couldn't afford the publishing. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, Lenny Cohen died a few years later, so... Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's something we'll revisit. I don't know. Yeah. Well, one of those things where the time is right again, you know, kind of happens, doesn't it? I would like to do some stuff with it. I think Dad's just one of the best songwriters I've I've ever... And, and, you know, I've been in and out and through the usual parenting-child relationships where you need to step away and come back again. And um, But I, I really do think with a fresh ear as well, aside from the fact that he is my dad, I think he's just absolutely fantastic. Really proper troubadour. He's just non-stop travelling and such good mastery of songwriting and performance Where are you Where are you Who shares the frying pan with you I move forward These days forward Did you stay Did security kick in Sex fellow In the royal said tonight about kids opening like music now uh, my kids are the same they never get to the end of a song so I'll play them something like Freebird by Lynn and right. and they'll go they'll go into random shuffle when the solo comes in or something and I get like well, you can't do this you know I'm incensed it's you really said it's like yeah. kids opening opening presents. presents it's like yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 but they never seem to they don't sort of absorb things like we perhaps did you know years ago I suspect it will come around again you know that feeling when you have to almost eat a whole box of biscuits before you realise you don't want to eat a whole box, box of biscuits. Does that make sense? Like, yeah, you have to almost of. get sick of it. Yeah. Maybe we're all going to get sick of so. too much music. <laughs> we'll have to have, like, complete... Well, there is too much. No music. music. Yeah. I mean, I get like that, to be honest. I love music, but I need to, like... I've got two months to paint, generally in February, and painting, doing lots of... Not, not house painting, doing, like, you know, canvas paintings, and I need to do something else for a bit so I can see that... Mm. Yeah, maybe we, maybe we. And you've got a new album out in May. Then, That's so. right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I look really look forward to hearing that. Aww. And presumably you'll be on tour again. Around yeah, we're that touring time, Australia. Yeah. It's coming out in Australia first. We're doing a tour in Australia in March, April, and then we're back and then touring May here. Fantastic. In the UK. Yeah. Well, I look forward to catching up with you then. Oh, thanks. And thank you very much for your time. Pleasure. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. <laughs> That was a broadcast production by glovebox.live.uk. Thank you.